Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to get really interesting because today it's all about the Roland MC80 Micro Composer and how you can use it in a live situation. So stay tuned. Hello, my name is Vane Sacrosanct from Cause Nation and welcome back for another video. I'm really happy that you step by for a moment and it might become a bit of an interesting video because I got a few questions about my last video, the one with the overall introduction of the Roland MC80 Micro Composer and one of these questions came from Roger. And you all might know Roger here on YouTube because his other name is The Midi Maniac. He has a channel here on YouTube where he does a lot of explaining on vintage gear such as the Roland MV8000, which I'm hoping to get my hands on myself one day, but also about other Roland stuff from back in the days. You should check out his channel, he also has a lot of videos regarding the Roland SP808 and so on. Now Roger asked me what you need to do to record some media tracks and how you can use the MC80 in a live setup. So I thought to myself. Yeah, let's do a short video about that and show you how I hooked everything up. And what also might interest you is that I'm going to use the Roland R8 as a drum sequencer that is set as a slave to the MC80. As a matter of fact, let's start with that. The first thing you need to do is to connect everything using standard MIDI cables. When I want to use the Roland R8 as a slave to the MC80, I need to use a MIDI cable from the first MIDI output of the MC80 and plug it into the MIDI input of the Roland R8. Then I need to go into the MC80's MIDI menu by pressing the tools button and then press F3. I need to press F3 again to go into sync mode where I will select MIDI out 1 as a source for the MC80 to send and start stop commands to the Roland R8. I need to set the R8 as a slave to the MC80 and this is done by holding the erase button and then press the clap button. This takes us to the sync menu where I will select MIDI by using the on and off buttons. And I press enter. Normally, if all went well, the R8 is now synced to the MC80. Before the R8 will start playing when I hit the start button on the MC80, I first need to record some MIDI tracks. Because with any MIDI information to be played by the MC80, the R8 will not start as well. So first of all we need to determine how long our song is going to be on the MC80 by adding enough measures. You could look at it as a tape machine where you first need enough tape before you record something and that you need to make sure your tape is long enough. Adding measures on the MC80 is done by pressing the track edit button in the song play menu, which is F3. This takes us into a menu where we can select different options. The fourth option says insert measure. When we select this option, we then can add more measures to our song. So first of all, we will leave the number of tracks to all. We set the starting point, or the beginning of our tape as you might say, to 1, and the amount of measures that we want to use to 640. You do not need to set it to that exact value. You can also choose a lower amount of measures, but 640 
is a good starting point and this way you have enough tape to work with. You can always add or remove measures at a later time. You also have the option to change the beat of the song, but we will look further into that at a later time. We press execute, it is processing, and then press the exit button until we are back in the main menu, which is the song play menu. In the song menu we can navigate to measure and by turning the jog wheel clockwise we notice the amount of measures is increasing. Now we need to set the tempo and the note resolution of our song. This is done by pressing the micro button, which is F4, and then press the tempo beat knob that is located at the upper left of the MC80. Here we can change the tempo of the song and the song's overall measure, using the navigate buttons and the keypad on the right side of the micro composer. If we want to change from tempo to the beat, we need to change temp the tempo beat knob once again. So every time you press the tempo beat knob, you will notice it will change from the beats per minute to the measure of the, of the song. For this video I will leave it to 120 beats per minute and 4 quarters. If we press exit, we will return to the song play menu. Now it is time to record some patterns. Therefore, we need to go out of the song play menu and into pattern mode. This is done by pressing the pattern knob which is located at the upper left of the MC80 under the tempo beat knob. This takes us into pattern play mode where we also can record patterns in real time. If we press the recording button you can hear a metronome sound, although the MC80 is not recording yet. In this mode we can set the amount of count-ins for the metronome, which in this case will be set to 2. We also can determine on which track we are going to record our first melody. We can choose one of the 16 available tracks, but for now I will choose track 1. Then I need to change the MIDI channel to the same channel for the instrument I want to use. So in this case I will choose channel 2 since this is the MIDI channel of my MOFO keys. If I then hit a key on my MIDI log, which is set as a MIDI input device on the Roland MC80, you can hear the MOFO is playing. When I'm done setting everything up the correct way and I press the play knob, the metronome will give me a 2 bar counting and then the recording will start. The first pattern that I'm going to record will be a simple bass melody. Later on I will record a bass sequence and a lead melody. So let's start recording and see if everything we did so far is done the correct way. Now that we have recorded our first pattern, we obviously need to quantize it. 
In order to do this on the MC80 we need to go into the quantize menu by pressing F2. In this menu we have several options. First we need to determine which track we want to quantize and since we used track 1 we will select this track by using the jog wheel until we reach the desired track. In this case it is already set to 1 so we will leave it this way. Secondly, we need to choose at which point quantizing needs to start. And in this case we started recording from the very first measure, so we will set this to 1, and then we need to choose how many measures we want to quantize. Since we recorded an 8 bar melody, we will set this to 8. We can also choose which MIDI channel we need to quantize. So we will set this to channel 2 because the MOFO keys is set to the same MIDI channel. On the right side of the screen we see the note resolution which is set to 1 16th. Because the recording happened on a lower resolution we need to change this as well. We will set it to 4 quarters. Once this is done, we press execute or the, F or the F6 button and the quantize process will take place. We press exit to go back into pattern mode. And now quantizing is done. Ok, so let's have a listen to what we have recorded so far. Now it is time to give our first pattern a name so it will be much easier to find it in the menu when we are going to use it in song mode. Pressing the F1 button brings us to a menu where we can punch in a name for our pattern and since we use some kind of filter sweep on the MOFO keys I will call it MOFO sweep. Inputting digits is done on the keypad which is located at the down right side of the MC80. We can choose anything from the alphabet in uppercase or lowercase, numbers and some symbols. To add an uppercase we simply use the keypad as an old cellular phone from back in the days. So every time you want to punch in a certain letter you need to press the corresponding button until you reach the desired letter. Our first letter is upper class M and it is a second character of keypad number 5 so I need to press this twice to have it selected in the display. Our second letter is a lower class O. We can select lower class characters by holding the shift button and pressing the fifth keypad four times. We will do this for the entire name. When I'm finished inputting the name, we simply press OK. And now the name of pattern number one has been changed from sing just number one to Mofo Sweep. So far so good. Now let's record the bass sequence. For this sequence I will use a Moog Minitor bass synthesizer which is set to MIDI channel 14. So I will use a jog wheel to select the second pattern or in other words the second track. Here we need to change the MIDI channel settings to 14 and we are all set.
I'm going to quantize this track to a resolution of 116 and name it to Moog Bass. Now I'm going to record the final track and I will use a lead sound coming from the Cork Mini Log. So I will change the track to number 3 and I will set the MIDI channel to 1 since this is the same as on the Cork. To speed things up I already quantized the last recorded track and I also recorded some additional tracks because else this video will be too long and I also need to explain how you can use the recorded patterns in song mode. Now something that I've forgotten to mention was that your patterns also need to have a certain amount of measures before you record anything. It's just a way like you would add additional measures to the length of your song or the length of our so called tape. So this is something that you need to bear in mind before you start recording your patterns. To summarize, you need to determine the length of your song by adding measures in song mode and you do the same thing for the length of each pattern in pattern mode. So you have to switch from one mode to the other. To create a song out of our recorded patterns, we need to go out of pattern mode by pressing the pattern knob or the exit button. Once in song mode, you have the ability to name your song and as you can see, I already did this. It is the same procedure as naming patterns. So if you want to create a song, we need to go into step rec standby by holding shift and pressing the rec button. Here we can choose on what track we are going to create our song, the MIDI channel and the recording mode. For now I will leave it this way and I press F6 which takes us into step recording mode and here we press the F2 button. In this menu we can lay out all of our patterns over the complete length of our so called tape which was 640 measures. On the right side of the display we can choose what pattern we want to use and every time we press the F6 button a single pattern will be put in place. So first we are going to use pattern number 1 which is our MOFO sweep and use this for 4 whole loops by pressing the place button 4 times. Then we will add our bass line and I want it to fall in after the mofo has played one loop. So I will start placing the bass line from the ninth measure. To do this I need to go into the song modes main menu, navigate to the far left of the screen and change the starting point of the measure from 1 to 9. Then I switch back to step recording mode as I did before, only this time I will choose track 2 and you also can see that the MIDI channel has changed from 2 to 14 which is the same MIDI channel as the Moog.
when we push F6, you indeed will see that the measure starts from the ninth position. Now I will choose the base sequence on the right side by turning the jog wheel and I will use this pattern three times. So, to keep track of things and if you are working on a project that takes more than a few days, it is good to know that you always can check where you have left your project, so you are able to add more patterns when you return to it. You can do this by selecting the micro button or F4 in song mode and scroll all the way down until you see what the next new measure is. Because I already added some more patterns into my song, the measure where I have left off is 193. Of course, you also can write it down on a piece of paper, but as you can see, the MC80 will remember it for you as long as you do not forget to save your song. Saving a song is done by hitting the F5 button where we choose Song or F6. We can give our song a name and then hit the OK button followed by save. In this case it asks me to overwrite the previous song but you simply need to follow the steps as shown on the display and you are good to go. So that's it for this video then. As you can see the Roland MC80 is a sequencer and MIDI recording device that goes pretty deep and I can tell you that we only have scratched the surface of it because it is massive. The connectivity by itself gives you enough options with 16 tracks that you can divide over two MIDI channels. I mean, I wonder how it would work if you would run those 16 tracks on one MIDI output and the same 16 tracks on the second while you have two Kenton MIDI splitters connected or something else like that. I mean you can hook up to 32 pieces of hardware onto it and have a massive live set going on or just have the possibility to record all those tracks in one go with the push, with the push, <laughs> excuse me, my English is not that good, with the push of just one single button. It is immense and a good way to just let go of that DAW every once in a while and experiment more with hardware like this Roland MC80 Micro Composer for instance. I'm gonna leave you to it with this simple song that I've created on the MC80 and hope to see you next time. I hope this video was helpful in some way and that it helps you to create your own music or whatever. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell below, make me a happy man. And remember, keep on grinding, keep on making music and do what you love to do. See you next time and cheers.